Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm gonna be making cordage from banana peel. We're on episode number six, so hopefully you kind of know the rough template that I'm trying to do, but I'm gonna get into IDing the plant, maybe other uses of the plant, and then we're gonna delve into how I've got it, harvested it, how I'm gonna be making the cordage, and then kind of results and evaluation of whether I would recommend it to yourselves as something that I'd use for a craft similar to how I'm gonna be using it. First up though, I need my trusty script to give you all the facts. Give you all the facts. Do I need to add more like, now the facts. Banana. A banana is an elongated edible fruit produced by several kinds of large herbaceous flowering plant in the genus Musa. The banana plant is the largest herbaceous flowering plant. All the above ground plants of a banana plant grow from a structure called a corm. Plants are normally tall and fairly sturdy with a tree-like appearance, but what appears to be a trunk is actually a pseudo stem composed of multiple leaf stalks. In some countries, cooking bananas are called plantains, distinguishing them from dessert bananas. The fruit is variable in size, color, and firmness, but is usually elongated and curved, with soft flesh rich in starch covered with a peel, which may have a variety of colors when ripe. It grows in upward clusters near the top of the plant. Almost all modern edible seedless cultivated bananas come from two wild species. I'm definitely gonna butcher this, <laughs> but let's have a go anyway. Musa acuminata. That's how I'm gonna remember that one. And Musa balbiciana, or hybrids of them. Musa species are native to tropical Indo-Malaya and Australia and were probably domesticated in New Guinea. They are grown in 135 countries around the world. The largest producers of bananas in 2022 were India and China, which together accounted for approximately 26% of total production. Bananas are used primarily for their fruit, but can also be used to make paper or textiles, created from the plant bark or the banana peel fibers. I actually saw in researching for this video, a really interesting video, granted it was a promo for a textile company, um, so I'm not promoting them, but the video itself had some interesting shots and interesting examples of this process of going from the banana stalk to making either paper or textiles out of them and getting the fibers out of them. <laughs> So, as I don't have access to banana plants where I am, here in Wales, I had my lovely wife go and pick me up bananas from the supermarket. So, over the past four or five months, every time I've had a banana, I've been collecting the peel, scraping it off with a spoon, left to dry, and then have just stayed in that basket for months. But I think each piece of peel would probably be okay after half a day, a few hours even. As a rule of thumb, I'd say, if you, if you leave them overnight, you'll probably be fine again. Now, this was how I've decided to soak them today. In this bucket here, don't know if you can see that one, probably not so well in the light. Um, they've been in now for probably about 15 minutes, something like that. I think that is more than enough, having a feel of that. So you could potentially spray these, I think, and just have them in a damp towel. Just gonna to take all these out because I think they're probably done and I'm wary. If you've seen the dandelion cordage video, that was the type of fiber that I think with over soaking, it can potentially become slimy and kind of then the fibers break down and you can't get as nice a cordage out of it. So I think I'll leave these here and just have these on the towel. Firstly, the reason why I'm quite excited about this project and I think this could be a really nice crafting cordage to make is because of that colour. So look at that. It's, I mean, it, it still has sort of this, I'd say it's kind of a deep brown, almost maybe even a chocolate. These aren't all uniform. They're roughly the uniform size because obviously bananas are rough, a rough kind of size, but they're, the thickness was just each peel. So some peels are thinner than others. So what I might do in making this Today, if I feel like I need to kind of split it and tear it, then I may do something like that just to get a thinner piece. Um, but otherwise, I'm thinking I'm just gonna try and attempt this just with each piece. It's gonna be tricky because they're not very long, so there's gonna be a lot, almost every single twist, I'm probably gonna be adding a new one. So it's gonna be tricky to try and not make it um, 
really, really thick. And I won't lie, I do think these have been soaked a little much. These seem a little bit, so I'm gonna try and dry these out just a touch. See, I think, first up, if I was to do this again, I think I'd just use this. So I've done my best to dry those out a little bit. As I've mentioned before, most of these cordage related videos that I'm making, it's my first go at making a cordage with that material. So it's kind of me learning with yourselves. This is one of those. So today is very much a, I've never even attempted this before. So let's, first of all, let's just do a quick kind of test on the material to see how strong it is. Not very. Let's do another quick test. So after this experiment, I yeah, hundred percent. This is this is definitely cemented. This ne barely needed a spray because it's made it kind of sponge-like and squidgy, and it's really holding on to that water. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause recording, make sure these are really dried out nice and well, and um, before going and doing them again. Actually, what I'm going to do is I've got two cordage videos planned for today. This one and the next one, which will be from corn husk. So what I'm gonna do is go record the corn husk video and let these dry out. I might even put them outside in the sunshine and let these dry out for a few hours before coming back and attempting it again. Yeah, let's do that. Should we start that again? <laughs> Definitely one of my favorites so far. I even made an extra cordage as well out of the sort of extra little squiggly bits. Squiggly? Is that what I just said? Yeah. But yeah, corn husk cordage, episode number seven. If you haven't already and you're interested about watching this one, subscribe, because it'll be coming out in a few weeks time. But before that, we now have all of the banana skin. This has now spent the majority of the day just sat here outside drying. I would compare this kind of to rubber However, unlike rubber, it is very easy to snap. So that's definitely a downside that I'm noticing so far. I was inspired by this video from Foraged Fibers and it was a quick video that they did, so it didn't necessarily delve into, you know, is this my mistake? Am I doing something wrong, which is why it's snapping so easily? Or is it just the material itself? So that means I'm gonna go really easy. And what I've just learned doing the corn husk cordage is if I can thin things down, it's better. Because if you can have lots of thin bits, it's better than just having big thick bits, especially I think with this, because it will hopefully help for it to stick together. So we're gonna start again, twisting this together until it kinks. And then when it kinks, oh, that's sort of kinked the wrong way. Over, twist, over, twist, over. And then I'm gonna instantly add another piece. Oh, light's gone off. Can you see that there? Oh, you can see that there, right. I'm sorry, everyone. That light's on. I need to go upstairs and get a battery. I'm feeling lazy right now. The sun's still coming in, so hang on. Camera's been fixed, so this shot, it's rubbish, <laughs> but this shot doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna try and do it kind of into the camera so that you can see. Twisting over, I'm just being really, really gentle with this. Twisting over, twisting over. And then I'm gonna continue. Even bits like this, I think I'm gonna thin down. So I would probably try and make that into three small pieces. If I need to, I'll maybe use a knife or something but hopefully I shouldn't need to do that. And then all my, and then it's probably gonna go from this thin cordage and get built up quite quickly so that it ends up thicker because I think that will hopefully keep the integrity in the cordage is by making this one a thicker cordage. Sometimes I clamp with these here to kind of hold it in place or sort of a bit of all three as I'm twisting new things, new pieces in. But yeah, I can definitely tell this is gonna be a very fiddly one, adding in lots of pieces together, because as you can see, they don't last very long, so they don't continue, but I'm hopeful. And just take, I'm just gonna take it easy. Take things slow. 
And I think we should. So it's probably going to end up, you can see I've, I've built up quite quick there already. But we're probably going to end up with thickness about that. So it probably will be about a pencil thickness. And I'll try my best to keep that consistency there by adding in constantly. All right, I'm going to continue with this, then go get another battery. And hopefully, wish me luck, we'll have some banana cordage. One thing definitely is that it does, has a banana twang. And I'm not a big fan of the smell of bananas. Not a big fan of bananas, really. Can you imagine why this one isn't my favorite so far? I love the color. That I can definitely say for banana peel, banana skin. It, it's, uh, yeah, I love this color. So if there's other ways of using it in crafts, please comment down below. Also like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, if there's a different way that maybe you feel like we could use this, maybe like paper making, obviously I mentioned that at the start and there could be various ways to use that. But yeah, for cordage, don't think it's going to be one of my favorites. I don't think it's going to be even in the top half. And it's finished. Not as long as the others, a lot uglier than the others. Part of this project, part of this series that I'm doing is, is learning. And sometimes when you learn, you learn things that go really well. For example, like today, earlier on, I made this cordage. You know, you could say it's black and white. I made this cordage that was beautiful to work with, is really strong, lovely color. Definitely gonna do that again. If I haven't done something wrong, it's really weak cordage. It was really faffy to try and put together. It felt slimy and kind of rubbery, but not in a good way. I don't think it would be useful. This is really moist still, basically. So I think as this dries, I think this is gonna separate, fall apart, and become even more useless as a cordage. So yeah, other than the fact that it's a lovely color. I mean, it makes me think almost maybe of like seaweed or something. What does it make it you think of? But other than that color, yes, therefore it could be used as an accent or something. And in doing this project, I'm gonna learn how it dries. And therefore, if it keeps some of the integrity and I could still use it as a cordage, again, you know, right now it's really pliable, not strong. If I put any force into this at all, that'll snap really easily. So overall, would I recommend making cordage from banana peels? <laughs> Actually, yes, I would. Yes, I would. Be creative, make stuff. Just because I've said that I wouldn't do it again doesn't mean you shouldn't. So go do it, see what you think, and then actually, if you do something that you really enjoy making it and it actually, you end up with a result that you really like, let me know. Go on Instagram. I've been pointing people to Instagram because it's a way that I can get images from people. So for example, if they've maybe watched how to make a Halloween themed basket and then they make their own version and send me a picture, amazing. So yeah, since I've got this on me, that's it for today. And I'll leave you with this video, how I made this, this Halloween themed basket. So I'll leave you with that for today. Thanks again, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.